Hello, my name is Scott Woods and I am here on behalf of my new mini video series called This Book Right Here. And basically what I do is I pick a book out of my personal collection as a writer and librarian and I review it. But I tell you like why you should be reading the book. Like that is the express purpose of me doing the book review at all, right? Um, it is probably a book that I love. It is at least a book that I extremely highly recommend because this book right here deserves to be read. So tonight's book will be The Cooking Gene by Michael Twitty. Uh, this book is a food memoir written in 2017. Uh, Michael Twitty uh, was originally a food blogger, um, but he is a chef. He does... Um, recreations of like slave era cooking. And so, um, but this book is not like a cookbook. This book is a food memoir. Mm. And it has a lot of research in it. It has a ton of history in it, his interpretation of it, his personal experiences with it. Um, it has all these incredible intersections of religion and gender and culture and history. And it's just, it's a really, it, the book is as sumptuous as a meal. It is a feast of words, right? Um, he's an incredible writer with an incredible mind and an incredible wit. And this book really seeks to um, unpack and interrogate a lot of the intersections that we ignore, that we want to ignore about food and what food really shows us about how this country was created, right? Um, and how there's like more than one South. There's an old South, a new South. Um, also Twitty, um, converted to Judaism, um, at a point in his life. And so there's some intersections there between like, uh, food ways of African American cuisine and like Jewish cuisine. And so this book has a lot going on and I absolutely cannot recommend it enough and I'll tell you something else too, and this is on a personal note. Uh, my food is religion, right? Uh, you don't get to look this beautiful if food is not an important aspect of your life. And so it's really important to me um, that we have conversations about food because food is intensely political. It is always political. It is the literal cornerstone of culture, right? Anything you want to do with culture starts with food, right? And so uh, ultimately, um, any serious take on food and culture and history um, needs to come at it with the kind of weight that Twitty brings to this topic and all the topics associated with it. And so, um, and, and this is, I want to read a piece of it just to kind of make sure I'm making the sell. But I want to talk about why it's important, too, in a sense, because black people get written out of food that they had a hand in creating all constantly. Like, that's just the way it's done, right? If you look at food shows, and Anthony Bourdain is God to me, right? Um, but if you look at, like, food shows, you know, they have, like, that special episode in the season where they go do some black food, but they always got to get some white po folk in there doing the food too. But the, you know, they sneak us in a little bit. I will say that the exception to this rule, uh, was an episode in the first season of ugly delicious, which is David Chang's show. And he did an episode on fried chicken, which really could have gone South fast. And he did it right. Like he nailed that issue. He brought in, all the people he needed to bring in. He brought in the range of ideas and values that he needed to bring in to make it work. And I cannot recommend that episode highly enough. That is like one of the best segments of episodic television I've ever seen on food. Um, anyhow, but back to this, let's get into this. I'm just going to read you one passage um, from this book to express to you why I really love what's going on in here. Um, he, I, I sometimes do two passages, depending on which take of the video this is. Um, but the first passage kind of talks about like what the book is going to do and how important it is. 
But the passage I'm going to read to you here is ripped out of Twitty's life. All right. And here we go. And I love it because. You know, a lot of food writers, they talk about how they love the food. And and in this section, very early on in the book, he wants to talk about foods he don't like. Foods that he's supposed to like because he's black, right? So here we go. Both of my grandmothers made chitlins. Excuse me, chitterlings. Although I never actually saw either one of them eat any. Grandmother Eloise would make them for daddy on holidays and New Year's to lots of grins and laughter and my chagrin. Grammy would make my grandfather and my uncle chitlins, which she detested, and so did the rest of us. And my mother would use those occasions to take me to the zoo, with all its funk and elephant houseness, apes throwing vomit, and a whiff of maned wolf in the breeze smelled better than our house when chitlins were made. Those were the days of hot dogs from a cart with sweet relish, red, white, and blue popsicles, and astronaut ice cream in all its freeze-dried perfection. I did anything and everything to avoid the smell and savor of slave food. And I didn't really understand why people ate that shit. Literally, I didn't get it. Nobody explained to me the cuisine of want until much later. I still will never eat chitlins, and I was perplexed as I learned to read why the word on the plastic tub was chitterlings, but everybody said chitlins, another reason simply not to trust this food. Another black medieval torture was okra. In our next kitchen, I remember my grandmother forcing me to eat okra. And all I knew is that it was pinkish on the inside for some reason, and snotty and viscous, and looked as if it was going to come alive at any point and have me for dinner. My mother encouraged me to have one bite, but I knew one bite would translate into four bites, so I refused, as if I were being sent off to the gulag. Finally, I put a piece in my mouth and marched upstairs to bed, but not before I spit it out in the toilet. Heritage my ass. I was horrified by hot sauce. I didn't like the way the bottle smelled, and it was streaked on the inside, really turning me off. Buttermilk, same thing, streaking the glass. More than one person has joked to me that all gross black food should be consumed on an African-American equivalent of both Passover and Yom Kippur where we atone for our sins and remember our history by being forced to partake in an obligatory feast of chitlins, okra, black-eyed peas, hog maws, pig feet, funky greens, pork rinds, and ash cake, flavorless cornbread baked in the ashes of the fire, to get it out of our systems once a year. Like a cedar plate, we could have a slave plate and watch one another's faces turn awry as we choked down our oppression and washed it away with a glass of, you guessed it, Kool-Aid. Four cups to symbolize our liberation from bondage. Four cups of sugar per cup to make up for the horrific meal and all the shame and guilt with which it was flavored. I remember all these soul food horror stories and shudder. They came from a cultural disconnect based on an interruption in the generations. It wasn't regional, because there were black people who ate the same exact food no matter where they lived. But it was a grandmother who left behind certain foods, and a mother who did the same. I had a grandson who lived in a world that was being taken over by Pizza Hut and McDonald's and Kentucky Fried Chicken and convenience foods splattered with additives, flavorings, artificial colors, and tons of seduction. And this could have been the end of my soul. What? Right? I mean, you're there, right? And just the balance that he brings to all of these people that he clearly loves and this food that he clearly does not it's it's amazing stuff and this book is just filled with all kinds of 
great stories and interactions and interrogations. It's an amazing book. I cannot recommend it enough. You should probably own this book, right? Um, and it should be read with food, right? I felt guilty reading just that piece of it just now without a wing nearby, right? So um, get this book. I encourage it uh, that you get it because this book right here is the business. Thank you for watching this book right here. We'll see you next time.